Hi everyone, this is Miki Tasaka, BCG's Chief Alumni Officer. I'm delighted to kick off another incredible BCG Alumni Leaders discussion today. Today, my guest is Dewan Kim, a senior partner from our BCG Seoul office till about a year ago. He joined in the class of 95, did many things for us during his time here, including running the office, leading our industrial goods practice, our energy practice, and also the AP regional head of our engineer products sector. He has moved on to Doosan, a incredibly large and successful infrastructure support company, and he is the chief strategy officer there. In addition, he has added the CEO of uh, Doosan Tesna as a additional role that he plays. Today, we'll be chatting with Duan on a number of things, including his career, his leadership experiences and learnings and career advice. So with that, Duan, if we can just start by uh, telling us a little bit about what your current role is and the transition to that from BCG. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Tipniki. So I have a dual role. So one is the CSO of uh, Tucson Holding Company, basically overlooking overall strategy of our uh, subsidiaries. But more importantly, we are as a group going through a kind of major uh, portfolio transformation. So a little bit of history on Tucson, we're the uh, oldest company in Korea. Used to be a consumer goods company uh, 20 years ago. Then we made a big transformation with the help as a, from BCG when I was a consultant uh, to become a uh, industrial goods company, the conglomerate. So currently we're a $15 billion company, mainly focused on the energy and the construction equipment. But then, uh, you know, both uh, businesses are relatively mature, slow growth. Uh, both actually companies are uh, kind of cyclical with the major, you know, the, the the macro economy, as well as the businesses get impacted a lot. Especially our energy business is impacted a lot about with the regulations or the policies of the government. So we're currently actually building the third pillar business, which can complement these weaknesses of our existing business. So in a high growth area, where it's more technology oriented, high margin business. So the one of the sector we chose was a semiconductor business. And as a result, actually bought acquired uh, Dusan Tesla, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. So overall, I'm um, leading this portfolio transformation at the group as a CSO, but also kind of overlooking uh, and discussing together with our existing subsidiaries of their strategy uh, uh, and the long-term uh, vision uh, for them. So going back to our Dusan Tesna, so my second role oh. is a CEO of Dusan Tesna. So Dusan Tesna is basically semiconductor test house. So in Korea, a lot of people recognize Korea as leading uh, semiconductor industry, but that's probably in the memory sector. In the non-memory sector where like TSMC plays, um, the U.S. and Taiwan is well ahead of uh, Korea uh, non-memory sector. And as it's our uh, uh, client, which is a Samsung Electronics, basically. And the government intention is to grow, to balance the non-memory sector with the memory. So Samsung is going through uh, a huge capital uh, investment in their foundry business. Mm. And for the semiconductor, the non-memory semiconductor business to grow, you need a, quite an ecosystem. Uh, starting with the uh, OSAT, we call outsourced semiconductor assembly and test business. So, for example, in uh, Taiwan, there's a company called ASC, which is kind of partnering with uh, TSMC to support their kind of back end of uh, overall process. And in Korea, uh, only a mid size or small companies are there. And we thought maybe, uh, you know, with our size, with our human capability, with our, uh, you know, balance sheet, we could probably get into the space and become a good partner to uh, Samsung's foundry business. So that's where uh, we made a, actually uh, the acquisition of Dusan Tesna. And currently um, I am the CEO of running the business. Well, that sounds like you have at least two ginormous jobs that you're yeah. handling <laughs> right now, uh, at least. And um, in light of everything that's going on in the world and another perhaps uncertain year, we are about to enter in about a month or so. Mm -hmm. How do you balance, I guess, your, your thinking, uh, Duan, as chief strategy officer in terms of both, you know, the long-term vision of where you'd like to go and the short-term and sure. more specifically, what are, what are your priorities in the coming year that you might want to share with the group? 
Well, I think the priority for all companies probably pretty much the same for coming in next year. Uh, obviously, we are expecting a you know huge economic slowdown. Uh, the inflation is still with us. Uh, high interest rates for Korea, high uh, actually foreign exchange rate as well. So. Yeah, I mean, the macro environment obviously looked quite um, risky next year. So making sure that our businesses sit on the healthy balance sheet, make sure our cash don't, uh, you know, run out, especially at the local financial markets. It's basically the finance markets froze up. Uh, even the best credit rated uh, companies cannot get the financing. So just make sure we don't encounter any, uh, you know, financial risks going into next year. But at the same time, uh, there are a lot of capital uh, projects that are going on with our uh, subsidiaries, for example. In our uh, Dusan Enability, which is in the energy sector, we are the global leader in the SMR, which is a nuclear uh, technology, a small modular reactor. Also, we are developing uh, our hydrogen-based uh, gas turbine. So hydrogen turbine, actually. So there are a ma you know, major R&D and product development projects, and we just make sure even under these tough times, uh, you know, we continue with our core investment that will basically hold our future. Obviously, the third uh, strategy is you know, monitoring any big opportunistic, uh, you know, big, big uh, opportunities in the market. Thank you for sharing that, Duan. Maybe I now pivot a little bit to uh, a more personal question, if it's okay. Um, you know, we all have good days and not so good days as leaders. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we fail. And I wonder if there is an episode or two you'd like to share from some of those more difficult days and how those difficult days or uh, failed days or uh, episodes have made you become an even better leader. Sure. Well, it's only been a year. So luckily, I didn't have any big failure yet. I would be, <laughs> wouldn't be here. <laughs> but clearly, uh, I guess the first few months is I realized, you know, it came to me that I am not sitting at BCG anymore, which means... Obviously, you know, BCG is a great place just filled with those talents, uh, the passionate, uh, you know, our, our young consultants, a uh, you know, great system that supports everything that you do. But when we move to the industry in this company, we still have a great team. But uh, I guess the first few months is my expectation to the team was uh, actually at the, I guess, BCG level, still expecting very fast outcome excellent you know slide decks with the strong logics so even though we have a you know great team you know the first feedback i got was does he think that we are consultants his team so <laughs> it kind of struck me because i was um you know considering that kind of gave him the you know longer timeline maybe my expectation was not as high but even that was kind of a uh, you know striking for my team and you know, listening to that feedback, I realized um, I, we cannot run a, I guess, execute our roles as a consultant, but more as a people leader, basically. Uh, you know, bring them on board, uh, explain them why you mean to do this, why this is important, you know, nurture them a lot more in detail than I guess when we were in BCG. But, uh, and then basically caring for them was a lot more important than, than I thought, or when I was at BCG, because it was supported by a lot of different people, all the systems, which we don't have in this company. Mm. On the contrary, any um, pleasant surprises or unexpected um, positive learnings upon your arrival at uh, your next destination? No, yeah, I think, well, compared to my role as a, as a consultant at BCG, uh, clearly, the industry is a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's because do we tell, make, do tell, really. Right, I mean, as, at BCG, we're still advisors. We're on a side track. Uh, we're supporting our clients to make, uh, you know, run the business, win, uh, you know, big, big uh, opportunities. But now we're at the actual playing the game itself. Now I'm a, I'm a player in the industry, and. Especially the the first acquisition that we made at Dusan Tesna was quite exciting. It was quite exciting uh, in, in terms of a process, the result we got. And Mickey, you know, I'm not a TMT guy, more of an IG guy, but you know, had to go into more uh, uh, you know TMT space 
and still learning, but uh, the, it's, you know, being on the driver's seat is a lot more fun than I expected. Okay. Um, so I can't believe our time is up, but one last question then if it's okay. Um, what is the best piece of career advice you've ever received? Um, I would say wasn't, I guess it wasn't really a direct uh, feedback or the guidance, but I guess a lot of, uh, I guess, career advices that I got at BCG is basically under this roof, which I, I think you remember is Insight Impact Trust. A lot of advices I got was kind of this uh, around or the, the, the umbrella of that. I think it used to be our vision statement mm -hmm. was under under that. And I think that kind of drove my uh, career at BCG and even more so when I'm here at Dusan, because I realized mm -hmm. starting with the trust, I guess at the end of the day, everything is about people, my yes. team, my customers, our partners. So people discuss, people decide, and we make things happen. And the, the one way to make that happen is to build a personal trust. Without trust, it's yes. very difficult to do anything here. But then how do you get trusted or to build a trust? It's basically, are you able to really create a, a real impact or the changes uh, with our partners, with our team? So it's a people business at the end of the day. How do you get the trusted relationship with our people is through making an impact, impact on business, impact on our individual, you know, uh, team. Um, then I think the insight is, turns out to be one of the great source of creating that impact. I mean, it's not always the source of the impact, but great source, one of the great sources to create that, uh, the impact is an insight as a strategist as, as we are. So. I think that, uh, you know, BCG old vision still works great. And I think I'm still uh, kind of under that, uh, you know, framework to, to, to actually continue my daily operation as well as to push my, uh, you know, our business forward. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I do think insight, in fact, trust is forever and people is forever. I'm, I'm uh, touched by the fact that that's what you think is most important, despite the fact that you're in this humongous infrastructure company. So thank you for sharing that story. Well, again, thank you for joining me today. It was great fun to catch up with you. It's great to see how well you're doing. And I'm sure our audience took away a lot of interesting lessons and uh, insights for themselves. Thank you. I hope all of you join me next month again when I bring another incredible BCG alumni leader. Thank you so much.